Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions and comments about some of my portraits, and specifically, we're talking about portraits with a shallow depth of field. People seem to really like that effect. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to achieve that effect. Uh, but first, let's discuss why uh, that effect is so appealing. Uh, well, for one, the pictures with a shallow depth of field look very different from your typical snapshot, which you know, a snapshot tends to have uh, an extended depth of field where, you know, not just the subject is in focus, but uh, their background is also in focus. Uh, for another, pictures with this effect uh, tend to look, a, a, you know, very dreamy or uh, idyllic. You know, people in pictures like this don't really look like they look to you in real life. Also, portraits with a shallow depth of field tend to place a lot of emphasis on the eyes because the eyes are in focus and sometimes even the nose and anything just beyond the eyes, uh, those things are out of focus so the viewer's attention is really drawn into the eyes. Now looking at the differences between a portrait with an expanded depth of field and one with a shallow depth of field you can see how you get a different effect. Okay let's talk about how you can actually achieve this nice shallow depth of field effect for a portrait. Now one thing I've seen a lot lately is the use of software to try to achieve this look. This look is usually achieved in camera but I've seen where people try to uh, create the look of a shallow depth of field in Photoshop or Lightroom and uh, usually uh, with some pretty awful results. So it's something I wouldn't recommend. No. So if it's not about something that you do in post, where is it uh, happening? It's happening in the lens, among other things. There's some other factors we're going to talk about, but let's start with the lens, okay? You need a fast lens. Uh, we're talking something in the neighborhood of 2.8 or wider. So that's f2.8, that's your aperture. Uh, you need a lens that can uh, that starts off with a pretty wide aperture. And, uh, and I know most uh, uh, consumer level lenses and uh, lenses kind of on the mid to low end uh, don't have really wide apertures, okay? Uh, but yeah, uh, shoot with something uh, f2.8 or wider. For example, for this picture here, my f-stop was 1.4. And that was done with an 85 millimeter lens, which brings me to my next point, and that is use a longer focal length, okay? You don't really want to do this with a wide angle lens. Uh, you can get away with using a normal lens like a 50 millimeter, depending on your distance to the subject. But the longer your focal length, uh, the more uh, control you'll have over that shallow depth of field look. So something in the 85 millimeter and up range. So distances are important too. Uh, in other words, the distance from the camera to the subject is very important. The closer the camera is to the subject, the, the more control you're going to have over this effect. Uh, and the distance between the subject and the background, that's also a factor. So putting all that in a nutshell, you want to use a fast lens a wide aperture uh, with a longer focal length and you want to get in closer to the subject. All right, so here's some things to watch out for. Uh, focus, obviously, focus. Uh, and usually you want to focus on the eyes and if you've got your subject kind of turned this way you want to focus on the eye that's closest to the camera. Even so it's a little weird to see uh, one eye really out of focus and the other eye in focus in a portrait but uh, sometimes you get that and it, it'll work for you if it's not too drastic. Also with a really shallow depth of field your margin for error is like a fraction of an inch so you've got to be steady your model's got to be steady, no movement back and forth, uh, or you've got to have a very fast and accurate autofocus and a fast shutter speed working for you, or both. So really, focus is critical, and any change in the distance between the lens and the point that you're focusing on is uh, it could possibly ruin your picture. And we know that shallow depth of field has a really nice effect, but it's not always the appropriate effect for a portrait, okay? Like, let's take, for example, environmental portraits. Uh, with an environmental portrait, you're using the environment. That's part, uh, telling part of the story. So you want that information discernible in the uh, picture. So you need a, a you know an expanded depth of field. You want you don't want that stuff all blurred out to oblivion. A headshot is another thing where you don't want to use that uh, you know effect where only the eyes are in focus because headshots are usually used uh, by casting and uh, you you know those people need to see what the person actually looks like they need a good representation of their likeness and some kind of a dreamy uh, shallow depth of field 
uh, portrait isn't the way to go. Also, when you've got more than one person in the photo, you need a little more depth of field to work with because uh, if you're focusing on one person's eyes, the other person might be out of focus just a little bit if your uh, depth of field is razor thin. So, you know, you need a little more to work with when it comes to couples and especially groups. Uh, your focus is critical in those areas and everyone needs to be in focus in those pictures. And if you know my work, you probably know that I've done a lot of boudoir photography and I can tell you that with boudoir, a really razor thin shallow depth of field is not always helpful because boudoir is about more than just the eyes. So think of depth of field as a creative option. It helps you control how much of the image is in focus, which helps you guide the viewer's eye to certain areas of the image, areas that you wanna highlight. And it also helps determine what parts of the image the viewer can actually make out. So again, try to use a longer focal length lens, a wide aperture, f2.8 or wider, and get closer to your subject. If you do these things, you can probably achieve a pretty nice shallow depth of field effect for your next portrait. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe and leave me a comment. Uh, that's about it for today. I'll see you next time.